1039 LI News Radio. People. Power. I thought this was America. And politics. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. With Fred Toll on 1039 LI News Radio. Welcome back to People, Power, and Politics here on LI News Radio 103.9 FM. I am your host, Fred Toll, and we're broadcasting live from Islip McArthur Airport on this cold, uh, rainy afternoon here on Long Island. Our first hour was the Reporters' Roundtable. We were pleased to have Barbara LaMonica, reporter with the South Shore Press, on talking about the presidential elections. And, of course, our good man, Carl Grossman, local columnist, reporter, author, and college professor, longtime uh, local journalist, talking about the water tax that has been proposed by County Executive Steve Ballone. Many items took place uh, during the County Executive's uh, State of the County address. I say more so the speech aboard the Titanic after it hit the iceberg. But uh, having said that, uh, we have not been able to get the County Executive to join us. I've uh, basically now given up trying. We've sent a couple dozen emails. We've called. We've spoken to his press people. And for some reason, he's unable to figure out how to get from the H. Lee Denison Building in Hopog to the studios here at the airport or to call us in at 631-451-1039. You can call Collect Steve Ballone. We will accept the charges. We would really like to get him on the radio to talk about some of the difficult situations that are facing the county of Suffolk and its residents. And uh, we will give you as much time, any day, any place, anywhere that you would like to uh, join us to talk about some of these issues. And I feel very uh, disappointed that our county executive has not been able to find time to come on and talk about some of the things that are happening. One of the issues that came up at the State of the County Address was the issue of our Suffolk County Deputy Sheriff officers, men and women who work in the Suffolk County Jail that have been working in excess of six years without a contract. There was a memorandum of agreement uh, with the former county executive that uh, they were going to take over the Highway Patrol unit. When this county executive, Steve Ballone, was elected, he entered into a new agreement with the Suffolk County Police Department, or the PBA union, for its members to return to the Highway Patrol units. Um, the deputy sheriffs were taken off. They had given givebacks to the county in order to take on that new task or continued task. Those givebacks were not given back by the county. Uh, th- those funds were kept. Um, the uh, union, who represents the deputy sheriffs, uh, sued the county in state court, and that lawsuit is still going on. They are still working without a contract. And most recently, as we learned a few weeks ago, when we had uh, officers from the Deputy Sheriff's Union on with us, there was also a federal lawsuit that the Deputy Sheriff's Union members are being retaliated against or persecuted against by the county. And there seems to be some validity there that uh, this union is not being treated fairly. And, you know, their contract is expired for a lengthy period of time and they're being forced to continue to provide services. The funds were not returned that the county took back in givebacks. In fact, the memorandum of agreement has come to an end, and at the end of that agreement, they would have had to give back the money anyway, and that still hasn't happened. So uh, members of the union uh, picketed last uh, week during the county executive state of the county, and some actions happened those days, and we're pleased to uh, invite back into the studio John and Artie from the Deputy Sheriff's Union. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you, Fred. Thanks for having us back. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was important that we kind of recap, you know, obviously we did a two-hour show talking about the deputies' plight, men and women who work in law enforcement, dealing, you know, with some of the worst elements in society, uh, transporting those uh, individuals, those criminals or prisoners back and forth between court and medical facilities, orders of protection, uh, enforcing judgments, you know, general law enforcement, Brookhaven, you know, East uh, for your department and for your officers. And it's it's just incredible in this day and age that, you know, 250 plus members are working six years without a contract. I just don't understand the logic there. 
Yeah, uh, what's going on is it's absolutely unconscionable to have uh, our union be six years without a contract. It's it's the longest in our history. There's really no reason for it whatsoever. And, and I'm glad that a lot of our issues uh, were able to, to come to light on your show. And, and again, we uh, appreciate you having us back on here. Um, but yeah, we did uh, organize a picket uh, for the state of the county address. Uh, and, and one of the reasons is we, we did a protest back uh, f- during Steve Ballone's inauguration. And w- with the attention brought to that protest, nothing really happened. Basically, th- there's still been no movement with the county. So the morning of uh, the State of the County Address, I received a letter uh, from Dennis Cohen, who is the chief deputy county executive. Now, mind you, I, re- I got a phone call from uh, Newsday prior to me even uh, being aware that a letter was sent out. The, they were aware of the letter before you were. Correct. So I take issue yeah, with that. Yeah. I really don't like... Negotiating uh, w- in the media. W- when Newsday <laughs> uh, wants a response from me uh, prior to me even reading the letter. So, uh, But that's par for the course with, with dealing with this county. Well, with this administration. Uh, exactly. Obviously, Newsday didn't find out about this letter through osmosis. Right. They weren't going through the garbage cans at the Denison building. Somebody on the county executive paid staff contacted Newsday and said, hey, by the way, we're renouncing this initiative today. Good, bad, or indifferent. Here's the letter we're sending to the deputy sheriffs. And Newsday, attempting to be a responsible journalism organization, picked up the phone to call you on a comment right. on a letter that you've not right. seen yourself. So naturally, I uh, now I had to check my email. I read the letter. Uh, I had spoken on the phone with, with Rick Brand, who's been reporting on these issues for many, many years, knows the players, knows what's going on. Right. And uh, I thank him for being patient with me because I was absolutely furious as to the content of this letter. And, and, and there's a... There's a few issues that I kind of want to talk about today. Uh, The first being was uh, the letter states that uh, one issue we would like to remove from the conversation is the matter of the remainder of the $4 million award, which was deferred from a prior uh, arbitration. We will take immediate steps to authorize payment of this sum, which was deferred by a prior administration, to the DSPBA members who were party to that deferral. So now... Uh, after a federal lawsuit is filed, the Malone administration has decided that they would like to remove from the conversation the day that we're going to protest the state of the county, they're going to return the $4 million. Which should have been returned when the MOA, Memorandum of Agreement, with the last administration expired, which was around when? Well, it was supposed to. The money was supposed to be returned in December of 2015. That was part of the agreement. It should have been returned when it was violated. Right. Um, but if, but, but if at least one, following the agreement, it should have been returned in December of 2015. Agreed. So he's five months over the deadline of the agreement, and he's, you know, three and a half years over the voiding the agreement of the last administration and keeping that money with no interest at that point. Not that Correct. you would have gotten interest on it. If you had, you know, gone the term of the agreement, that was your agreement. If you had interest in it, great. If you didn't, then you didn't. But once he voided the agreement and they kept the money for three and a half years, that should have also accumulated interest, you know, for your members. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, j- just to clarify real quick, the MOA is not ended. It, it's okay. uh, the MOA goes till the end of 2017. So, it, in fact, in our opinion, it's still valid. It's still valid. Okay, yeah. that's an important factor. Now, what were some of the other? I mean, obviously, the Highway Patrol, you know, taking on that function, the money you gave back would have been returned in December. Is there any other issues that were part of the MOA? No, well, the MOA itself was for job protections, you know, of all all our jobs. No layoffs. District court, you know. um, No transfer of other people. No transfer of jobs to any other. um, Now, has there been any problem in that, in those regards with the county? I mean, that's not an issue I've heard, so I assume that there's no issue there. No, I, I, I... this is really the only issue of the highway. Um, and in and fact, the uh, in fact, guys that have retired, they have paid them their portion of the uh, deferred money, you know, in that, the way. So they divided by it in that sense. That's hilarious. So yeah. if you're still working, they're not giving you the money back. It's, it's not hilarious in a good way. It's hilarious, ridiculous hilarious yeah. that if I leave the county, you're giving me my money back. But if I'm still working here, you're, you're, you're basically stealing from me. You're keeping the money that I was entitled to and yeah. should have received. Correct. And uh, also, just to, in the letter that John just read, a portion of it, they say they, they were taking immediate steps to repay us. So I don't know that they know the definition of immediate, meaning right away. But um, I contacted uh, the controller's office and our own personnel office this morning, and they have not gotten any 
a word on to start, you know, calculating those payments or anything towards us. So, right. Well, I mean, if, if in fact this happens, which you know, it, you know, as the old adage goes, take it with a grain of salt. In his instance, you need to take it with a five-pound bag of salt. Yeah. Well, they um, don't have a really good track record of uh, honoring their agreements. So yeah, just yeah. because it's in a letter, I'm. I'm not going to hold my breath until I have uh, money in hand. Yeah, until the check yeah. comes. And, For some and, reason, we have trust issues with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder why. Yeah. You know, and, and quite honestly, you know, obviously, once you get the check, I'd wait until it clears. You know, and then I'd say, okay, now I've gotten my money back. What is that, you know, obviously nothing that I'm going to hold you to the dollar to, but what does that equate to to your members approximately? What do you think your members hopefully will be getting back? A, a ballpark. Nothing I'm holding you to, but yeah, just, no. It, it depends so on what s- it depends on what their uh, what kind of overtime they worked in that time frame. You right. Know? There's guys that are owed a lot less, and I would say they're up to at least twenty thousand. Some of our members are owed. So it could know? be hundreds up to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Which is a lot of Meaning money. Meaning hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah, two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Yeah, for the up, new members, uh, up to right. twenty thousand. Sure. That's a lot of money for a, a working family in Suffolk County. That's sure. you know college tuition. That's you know renovations to your house. It's paying off a loan. It's it you know that's significant dollars. We're not talking about thirty eight seventy five. No. I mean we're talking thousands of dollars. You know that your members have given back to try to help the county out when it was in it, when it was in its alleged worst county fiscal times right. i i don't even think that was a snapshot compared to where we are today but um you know it's a significant amount of money and obviously the county is reeling with some serious financial issues so do you think it's the lawsuit do you think it was you were picketing do you think you were protesting or do you think they just tried to make themselves look good and say hey by the way we're giving the money back now yeah, well, I, I think obviously the uh, the federal lawsuit has uh, has a big impact, but from our position, w- just simply returning the money at this point is not going to make us withdraw the federal lawsuit. Um, if if I were to go to your house and steal your car, and then I return it after a few years, you know, people then can't say, "Well, Fred, aren't you happy you got your car back?" Well, it would depend. Did you return it with a full tank of gas? <laughs> did, it, did it have a better stereo system in exactly. it? Did you clean it up? Or is the car in worse shape? Right. And clearly, we're handing you back the money with no interest, with no explanation, with no policy in place to prevent this from ever happening again. So quite honestly, you're giving me back what you stole, and now you need to go to jail. I mean, using that analogy of stealing somebody something. Absolutely. Yeah, they've, they've actually created a source of their own negotiation similar to what you went through with AIM when they they laid off, unfortunately, they're the AIM members, and then they negotiated a lay, no layoff clause. Yeah, that's great. You're, You're taking off something away people. from us, and then you want to negotiate yeah, you know, I mean, it's like away. holding a gun to your head, basically. It's it's kind of yeah. crazy. You're listening to People, Power, and Politics here on LI News Radio 103.9 FM, and we're broadcasting live from Isla MacArthur Airport. Uh, my name is Fred Toll, and I'm your host. I'm pleased to welcome John and Artie from the Deputy Sheriff's Union Inn. We're talking about the county executive state of the county address last week and what some of the things he is proposing and what impact that address may or may not have on issues that are facing the deputy sheriffs throughout Suffolk County. They have been operating without a contract for six years. There are issues regarding uh, performances and assignments and monies that were given back as a effort to try to help the county during its, its finances. We'd love to hear from you, our listeners, 631-451-1039. That's 631-451-1039. So, John, you were saying, obviously, you know, you, you got the money back in the letter. What else did he talk about? So one of the other issues uh, was the letter opens up with, uh, since 2012, this administration has worked in good faith to negotiate a contract with the Deputy Sheriff's Police Benevolent Association, which I, I find that very strange to open up the letter with that statement, being as we have a charge in PERB, which is the Public Employee Relations Board, alleging bad faith bargaining. So obviously there isn't a good faith effort to negotiate a contract with and if they were able to negotiate contracts with uh, all these other unions that they love to, to tout, that they were able to negotiate these long-term deals with the, with the PBA, the Detective Superior Officers Association, and the Corrections Officers who are in our uh, quote-unquote pattern, then why is our union any, any different? It, it simply doesn't make any sense why you can't uh, come to an agreement with a 250-member union um, but at the, and now they're stating that the county will file for interest arbitration. Now, 
What does that mean in, uh, in English? For so you things? have to follow the logic here. Now, when they negotiated these long-term contracts with uh, the first being the PBA, their main justification for doing so was to avoid going to arbitration, which means an arbitrator would would have both parties come to the table and he would impose uh, a decision. And their reasoning for, for these long-term deals was they wanted to avoid arbitration. The county executive touted that when he was elected, he was going to negotiate with the contracts and we were not going to go to arbitration. Now the position of the county is they will be seeking to proceed to arbitration. How do you have such a, a complete 180 in positions for one bargaining unit only? And again, this falls right into what we're alleging as far as political retaliation. When it, when it comes to us, there is not equal treatment whatsoever. Yeah, there's no question that it appears you know, that you have a legitimate concern or argument. You know, that your group is not being treated fairly. I mean, how do you start off, we've negotiated in good faith, you know, for the last four years, and you're six years without a contract and there's no resolve. I mean, what's the holdup from the county's point of view? It seems, you know, illogical that for, you know, not that you're, I don't want to say it's just a small group, but small group in numbers that it's really not going to have, you know, the fiscal impact that, that one would have, let's say, with a union like AIM, for example, that has 6,000 plus members, you know? Obviously, everything you do there, every dollar adds up, every $10 adds up. I mean, you have a smaller group, you know, that the impact should not necessarily be as severe. And it seems very odd to me that, you know, that he's dragged it on, and it makes you suspicious, I mean, suspicious and I guess it makes you wonder, where is this guy coming from? Right. And, and one of the things they, they, they try and allege is that in our negotiations, we're, we're seeking to break uh, what they call the pattern. So now you have different bargaining units are in, in different uh, negotiating patterns. You have all the police unions, and then you have uh, the deputy sheriffs and corrections in, in a separate bargaining pattern. So their position is that if in this round of negotiations we were to make more than the correction officers, that this would uh, break that pattern, which is completely untrue because uh, throughout our history, deputy sheriffs and correction officers, one has made more than the other. And, and, and you it know, keeps changing. And, and, and it changes. Goes, oh, so yeah. it, it doesn't really matter who makes more. The, the patterns will remain the same. The percentage increases will remain the same. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's simply just an absolute mistruth that they're, that they're yeah. using to justify uh, not being able to negotiate a contract. We've got a caller, Suffolk County Legislator Kevin. McCaffrey, who's also the minority leader of the legislature. Legislator, how are you? Good, thank you. How's everything going? Everything's going well. That's good, that's good. You're on the air live. Okay, we're good. Happy to be on. So, Kevin, what, what do you think about this situation? What's what's going on over there? Obviously, you've got a front row seat to this chaos. Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, look, it's this is, has been something that's been going on for too long. The deputy sheriffs without a contract for six years. Uh, clearly, the, the county had an agreement with with them, and uh, and now the deputy sheriffs are seeking to enforce that agreement. And now the uh, they're being made out to be the bad guys here. Like we uh, they, we had an agreement with them. Uh, in, in my mind, uh, I don't think we fulfilled our end of the the agreement, and. Uh, we need to make sure that we, we make these deputy sheriffs whole. And then, more importantly, get them a contract that they deserve. I would imagine the sentiment is, uh, you know, regardless of party affiliation, I would imagine all of the legislators are uncomfortable that this has gone on for over six years. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's some are more uncomfortable than others. It's easy, it's easy for some to say they're uncomfortable, but... But not every one of them is standing up and, and taking a position to say, hey, we need to fix this, and we fix this now. Uh, it, it's not right. During, during the, the State of the County Address, uh, my, almost my entire caucus, uh, the Republican caucus, stood outside with the deputy sheriffs in support of them. And, and we do it for any union, whether it be the PBA or the AME, because, uh, as I said in, in my uh, response to the county executive state of the state of the county, uh, we, we need to treat our employees better, and we need, and, and it's a reflection on on all the working people in Suffolk County. And if we if we can't lead by example, then then who can? Yeah, I mean that's the first time I can recall so many legislators not entering the chamber and not walking across the picket line. I guess, um, you know, in support of the county workers. That's a compliment to those who did it. Yeah, yes, it is. I was very proud of of, of those that that chose to stand outside with uh, our county workers. 
Yeah, it seems to be that the county executive is just grasping for every dollar he can try to get his hands on to fix the budget mess that he's created. Yeah, and, and you know, that's one of the things that I brought out as well. I mean, it's it's this red light camera uh, program that's turned out to have caused more accidents than, than it has prevented. Uh, we're talking about the, the alarm bill, which, uh, and now water tax. I mean, w- what is what is next? Tax in the air that we breathe? Uh, and, and Don't give know, him any ideas, please, I, legislator. <laughs> I would appreciate you not repeating that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they did speak about the air quality in Suffolk County being, yeah. being subpar, so uh, yeah. so uh, so sit tight. You never know what's going to come out of there. Look, I appreciate you calling in today. I know you have a, a jam schedule with Committee Week this week. Thank you for calling yes. in. Yes, thanks, legislator. Very thanks. good. Happy to support uh, the deputy sheriffs and all, and all of the uh, workers in Suffolk County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Suffolk much. County Legislator yeah. Kevin McCaffrey, the minority leader of the legislature. And when we come back from the break on people, power, and politics, we'll continue our conversation with John and Artie and talking about uh, some of the issues that the deputy sheriff's union is facing. Um, Give us a call. Let us know what you think. 631-451-1039. And we'll talk to you right after the break. 